Good morning, my name is Federico and I'm here with BI Consulting Services. In today's video, we are going to focus on building a real-time database with live data. Specifically, we will be working with financial assets from the S&P. One of the biggest challenges we often face when practicing and using Power BI is finding reliable real-time database that we can actually work with to extract the maximum amount of the information possible and continue developing our scheme and learning everything we can. For this real-time database construction, we utilize several key tools. First, we use Wikipedia to gather all the information about financial assets, mainly the tickers and symbols, which was what interests us most. Then, we use Google Colab to download the last 10 years of financial data for each of these assets and Google Drive to store all the information, both historical data and code. But what we really need to focus on is GitHub. What we did here was automate the entire process, making our Python code execute automatically. We have a readme document that explains everything we do in this public GitHub repository, which belong to BI Consulting Services. Let me walk you through what we have here. First, we have the Tiger CSV file, which contains all the information found on Wikipedia, all the symbols for all the financial assets we currently have. We have also add some extra financial assets that interest us. But in the next video, I will be showing you how to modify and edit this list and how to execute the code correctly without any issue. The next step, is the actual stock PY file. This is the Python code where we execute our script and where we have the daily information that gets saved to the actual stock CSV file. Here we don't just download in financial asset information. We also extract attributes of interest such as market cap, beta, trading volume, and all this information gets saved in stock info. Moving forward, we have the historic stock PY file. This is what we are executing directly in Google Colab. And as I mentioned, we will leave the link below in the description where you can connect directly to this repository, see everything and obtain the code. In the next video, I will be showing you which part you need to edit to get exactly what you want. Then we have the historic stock CSV file. Here is where it is, you can see it because it's very heavy. It contains 10 years of information for nearly 500 financial assets. So it's a lot of data and doesn't allow us to view it properly, but it does give us the raw format that we will be importing directly into Power BI, which took like this. To us, at first, we won't have the capacity to understand it, but Power BI, when imported in web format, read everything perfectly without any problems. If we continue advancing, we can see this dashboard in Power BI that we currently create, where we import all the information. We have the company with the highest market capitalization currently. This is a date as of yesterday, if I remember correctly. We have sectors, industry, and we have the filters for this table that we can configure to choose the data that interests us most. Sometimes we want to compare some financial assets by tickers or sector. For example, let's say we want to see NVIDIA and we can just select this to start comparing. Basically, we go to technology and this way we are grouping in this table all the financial assets that belong to technology by EBITDA. We can see which one have the lowest and which one has the highest. And we can play with the years in this table and show how behave over time. But continue with the database in importation, which is what we want to see in this video. We have all this table here. We have two extra ones, stock info and demo country. These two tables were created by me from another repository, which is for importing the image we have here, like the United States flag, which represents where the compa company with the highest capitalization belongs, and the company logo, which is found in David Palacio repository. For countries, we directly take the origin from stock info, remove the columns, remove the duplicates, remove blank values, and we are left with the country directly. 
what we did was add the ISO format and then from this repository we import the flags directly for each one, simply for a visual purpose. Next, the actual stock CSV file that's found here and historic stock is where we have all historical prices up to date. What we want to do was take the historical data and we are the we have downloaded and append the actual stock query to have everything in the same database, making manipulation make it manipulation simpler and visualization more efficient. For stock info importation, here is how it's done. We go to historical historic stock, copy the link to any new web link, go to new source web we paste the web address, accept and import directly like any web address. We give it time and this is done with the first 200 rows showing how the information is visualized. We click and then, and that's it. We can accept and import everything correctly. In this case, we can cancel because it's the same as what we have here. It will import in this format then we promote the header, meaning we remove and unpivot the data so that all columns are placed directly as file. It's much simpler and easier to work with. And that's everything for this video for now. In the next video, we are going to show you more details how we execute the Python code to download all the information so that everyone can do it on their own. We also show some details about the dashboard, some tricks, some things that can be done, how filtering works and extra details. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.